So good morning uh, and welcome to episode three of the podcast series Issues That Matter that is uh, produced by the Turkey Program and the Hellenic Foundation of European and Foreign Policy in Athens with the support of the Friedrich Nauman Foundation. My name is Ioannis Grigoriadis. I'm one of the two coordinators of the project together with Elembian Ardaoulou. Our project aims to shed light on aspects of greek turkish relations that uh, do not attract the attention they deserve, in our opinion. So we look into projects uh, that bring forward collaboration between the two civil societies, between academic institutions uh, of Greece and Turkey. The aim of this podcast series is to contribute to a new discussion on Greek-Turkish relations, not through the usual lens, but through new lenses uh, that, that try to focus on the common problems and challenges that the two countries and the two societies are facing. Today, uh, I'm very uh, honored and uh, very glad to be joined by two leading scholars in the field of the history of architecture of Greece and Turkey, and two scholars that have been uh, collaborating on a topic that is very, very important and very, very topical. That is the population exchange between Greece and Turkey. We are uh, hosting today uh, Dr. Kalliopi Amigzalu, who is a senior researcher and principal investigator of the Home Across Project, which is hosted at the Liamet. And uh, we're also uh, happy to have uh, uh, Professor Elachil, who is teaching architecture at the Izmir Institute of Technology. And she's one of the key uh, investigators, key researchers in the Home Across uh, project. So I would like first to give the floor to Dr. Amigdal to tell us a few words about Home Across. What is and why is it so important for Greek Turkish relations? Good morning, Professor Gregory Ali. Um, thank you very much for this invitation. We are both very happy to be here. Home Across uh, has a full title, Space, Memory, and the Legacy of the 1923 Population Exchange Between Greece and Turkey. Uh, it's an ERC-funded project, as you said, hosted by Eliamet. has two partner institutions, uh, the ITE, Izmir Institute of Technology, and uh, the Center uh, of Asia Minor Studies here in Athens. And our goal is to record and to study the architectural the, and the spatial footprint of the population exchange in two specific provinces, Attica and Izmir. We are, our team is uh, interdisciplinary, although we have uh, mostly architects in the team, but they have um, different specializations, uh, geographers, historians, museologists. And uh, we also have um, political scientists and a historian in the team. Um, and our team is also Greco-Turkish. So half our team is uh, Turkish and it's based in Izmir. And the other half is Greek and based in Athens. And I do think that uh, we need to highlight the importance of the anniversary of population exchange, right? So the project is taking place at a very important moment. That it is, is true. Old, it right? is true. Um, it, it is interesting to say that perhaps the anniversaries are kind of different uh, in the two countries, uh, both uh, symbolically and historically, but also in terms of the exact time. Um, 2022 is... Uh, more important perhaps on the Greek side, but as uh, Professor Chill might uh, tell us, 2023 is going to be a, a landmark year for uh, Turkey. And um, the Lausanne Treaty officially was also uh, signed, the exchange of population was also signed in, uh, in 1923. So it's not a, an anniversary that is um, very easy, easy to pin down on uh, the calendar. Uh, it, like many things in um, the history of the two countries, is something that is under negotiation, or you know, it, there is a kind of um, discrepancy between the perception of the anniversary on both sides. This is very true, and let me also add that I'm very happy to be part of the Greek team of Home Across, so I'm involved <laughs> uh, in this uh, research, and I do. And we are happy, Professor Grigoriadis, that you are you are part of the team. And I do look forward to collaborating uh, with Turkish colleagues and sort of contributing to a new understanding of Greek-Turkish relations from a very interesting angle. Professor Chil, 
What do you think is the main uh, contribution of home across uh, on these uh, years of anniversaries in Greece and Turkey? First of all, thank you very much for having me and inviting uh, for this podcast. And uh, I think it's very important uh, for all of us to talk about this uh, project. Um, well, I think um, the fact that this is a collaboration is very important, uh, that there are these two teams uh, based in Athens and Izmir, uh, but working together uh, on the event that has mutually affected uh, two countries and uh, two big communities uh, is very important. I think we are, um, if I may dare say, setting a model uh, of um, a future scholarship as well, uh, that uh, we are um, doing something uh, together using the same methodology, although interdisciplinary, trying to find the base for um, events that are connected, but the consequences are very different. Uh, so in that sense, I, I, will, I want to stress the collaboration part of it, uh, like both teams meeting uh, together very often. Um, and discussing uh, the scholarship. And also, I think uh, it's I inevitable that, as Dr. Amygdalus stated, it's 1922 and 1923. It causes us to confront many issues. And the fact that we can sit at the same table and not overlook, understand, and, and talk about them, but still continue to do work together, uh, I think is the most important thing. I do agree that the opportunity of collaboration uh, with an innovative angle on a, such an important and sensitive issue is something that contributes greatly to a better uh, understanding of our common history, like of, of, of Greeks and, and Turks. But uh, what are the innovative elements that uh, Home Across is contributing to that discussion? So what are the new angles that uh, it's introducing? Dr. Amigdalo, could you tell us a bit more? Perhaps um, we should give some context first um, with regards to the research. Attica and Izmir were both very much affected by the uh, population exchange. Uh, Izmir was a major case of outflow of the Greek Orthodox populations, and it was also a, a war a region, so it was heavily affected by the Greek Turkish War. Also, it accepted a large population of Muslim refugees, incoming Muslim refugees, especially from uh, um, northern Greece and from uh, Crete. So um, in the case of Izmir, we have both um, outgoing and incoming populations, and we are looking at how the landscape the architecture, the monuments were transformed, were either destroyed or reconstructed or reused. Um, and we are um, finding a lot of evidence both on the field, but also in the archives and uh, through a graphic work. Our goal is to kind of uh, record the huge transformation that took place in the area, which relates to two displacements, both the displacement of the Greek Orthodox populations, but also the displacement of the Muslim population. And on the Athens side, on the, in the province of Attica, uh, we didn't have uh, local Muslim populations just before 1922 because uh, the region was part of the Greek kingdom already since 1830. We don't have outcoming populations, but we have huge inflowing Greek Orthodox populations in uh, uh, in Athens, the Athens and Piraeus almost doubled in size. And what is a, very interesting on both sides is that the new refugees, the incoming refugees, were settled in completely different uh, structures, exactly because of the aforementioned difference. In the case of Vizmir, um, the dominant form of refugee housing is the embalimat puke, the exchange properties, the Greek properties left behind by the Greeks. Whereas, as you might imagine, in Athens, um, there is no pre-existing Muslim housing that the incoming refugees can use. So there is a huge construction process of new housing, either uh, from the point of view of the state uh, or uh, by the refugees themselves, like slums. Having, having set a little bit of um, this uh, context that we're working with, we can say that the project touches upon 
a couple of different issues and contributes to uh, the writing of uh, different uh, histories. This is, first of all, a history of displacement and the history of transformation of the urban and rural landscapes. Studying these transformations is necessary in order to grasp the history of these regions, in order to understand how they came to be and why they are the way they are. But the project also touches upon issues of heritage, how people perceive uh, this past, whether this past is Ottoman houses, uh, traditional vernacular architecture in the region of Izmir, or whether it is 1920s and 30s and 40s mass housing in the case of Attica. Uh, so heritage and uh, society's relationship to the past is at stake here. Beyond this, we are t- we are we are working, we are studying a history of modernization of these two states. We're studying history of the modern movement in uh, Greece and Turkey in a way. We're studying a history of westernization because these displacements and the response of the state to these displacements uh, goes hand in hand with larger visions about modernization, about westernization, and so on. And uh, last but not least, we are also um, dealing with a history of social welfare, right? Like at a time when social welfare is in crisis, and we have seen this very much through the pandemic, and the housing crisis that people are are experiencing today, um, and the the fires that are, are everywhere around us, the the role of the state in relieving citizens' problems, and in in uh, in our case, dealing with space uh, more than any other thing, is at the core of our project as well. And how do people deal with refugees? How do people live uh, deal with uh, the lack of infrastructure? How, do, how does the state, how do the countries um, decide and intervene in space through social housing or through new infrastructures? Thank you very much. I think your last points uh, raise another important aspect of the project. Uh, how relevant it can be and how informative and uh, instructive it can be for a number of contemporary crises because we've been witnessing refugee crisis on a sort of on a global dimension over the last uh, decade at least, if not longer. Uh, There are other migration uh, challenges that uh, Europe and uh, the Western world is facing as well. But as you you have raised already, there are pandemic crises, a a number of major emergencies whereby state response is expected. So, Professor Chin, what do you think Paul Macross can teach us about this? What is the added value that the project brings to the better understanding of contemporary crisis around? I think um, the major contribution um, in this project, there, I think there are many methodological issues, uh, methodological contributions, but uh, uh, in terms of the subject, I think population exchange the phrase itself uh, is sounds so neutral, um, n- not positive, not negative, but you know, stating the affairs of things. But when we um, focus, when we make it the center of the investigation of the scholarship, we understand that it is not such a neutral uh, state of affairs. It's uh, when you state population exchange, you imagine people um, departing, and then you you imagine people incoming. You know, like as if you know everything went smoothly. Of course, we we know uh, from uh, the uh, from the previous work, uh, from the previous scholarship that it hasn't been like this. But I can say that at least for the um, Turkish side, for the public opinion. You know, being a mubadil, being an exchangee, it sounds as if, uh, you know, like people have been invited and they traveled, they came, they found um, a better, uh, nicer, perhaps, places to live in. But when you when you specifically focus and see what's going on with the population exchange, it is um, it is a scholarship of losses and absences and struggles. So I think 
through this uh, research, we will, uh, we, I hope, uh, would make the public more aware of uh, what it means to be uprooted, um, to leave, uh, to leave spaces in such uh, uh, conflicting times and trying to make home again uh, and settle again. And it took almost two generations for families to feel at home again. And this is such a big, such a big thing. And when we are looking at the history of uh, the Western Asian region, we understand how much we lost. So it's, uh, you know, opening up all, all this, um, all these struggles. And uh, so it's a, it's a different thing to state migration, population exchange. And it, when it comes to looking at it through inhabitations, through even only through the physical space itself, you understand what a struggle uh, people went through in, in all these stages of um, resettlement there. Are people here, when we do interviews, they tell us that they don't even uh, look towards the quarantine island because of the memories. Although now, you know, they're settled and, you know, they they feel integrated, but still, you know, all those uh, affairs of things, burdensome memories, I would say. And so probably this research would, at one hand, uh, open and make people more aware, the public more aware of what it means. In other words, add a human dimension to this. It's not just the interstate dimension that is normally dominant in uh, official historical narratives, but what this population exchange meant for millions of people who were violently uprooted and they had to meet uh, uh, make enormous difficulties in order to adapt to a completely uh, foreign new environment. Yes, in, uh, I, I know we, we've been discussing these issues uh, in the last uh, year or so. Uh, I know how it, different it is in Greece, uh, in the public opinion, and how different it is in the Turkish side. So I think uh, for uh, the Turkish uh, historiography and the public opinion, um, maybe it's more important because of the birth of the nation, I feel like overshadows all the catastrophes and uh, traumas, I would say, of the people who, whom uh, this land lost and also the incoming people who went through. Exactly. Uh, if, I, if I may add to Professor Chill's uh, very important point, uh, the research, researchers have, um, political scientists or researchers in other fields have shown that the, this mutuality and this compulsory, compulsory character of the population exchange uh, back at the time uh, went completely against the idea of uh, human and individual rights, uh, the rights of the refugee. So these populations were stripped uh, of a voice and a choice, and they were, they were treated as masses uh, rather than as uh, individual people. And uh, we know that the legis legislation, especially post-war, has improved a lot on that manner and on that matter, and that people today, refugee rights are considered on an individual basis. Uh, but of course, we still live in a world of tremendous displacement. As uh, Professor Till said, many of the many of the issues we we face while studying the population exchange relate to to contemporary issues as well. Um, Perhaps, perhaps if I may add, one of the things that I find very interesting uh, when studying the ways that the refugees settled and integrated, uh, as uh, Professor Chill said, with a lot of difficulty over a couple of generations, is that in this integration process, uh, the agency of the refugees themselves was of fundamental importance. So. Um, Sometimes we tend to think that, you know, integration is the state's responsibility or as if it's a one-sided situation. But what we, what we see in the history of the population exchange is that what the state did, no matter how much it did, especially in the Greek case, where we have thousands and thousands of new dwellings, 
it did not suffice for the refugee housing, but also it would never succeed if the refugees did not fight for uh, their housing, if they did not accept with a lot of pain that this would be their new home, if they did not start building again their lives and their own dreams. And you can see this in any, in all, all types of, of housing. You can see it in the slums, but you can also see it in the, in the mass housing, how people transformed 20 square meter units, like a single room uh, that was given to them. They transformed it, they expanded it, they, they, they took care of it, they preserved it, and they um, bred their family. They, they brought up their children and they, they grew uh, in, from that little nucleus and turned it into a home. So in a way for me, this is a principle that is still valid today that we have to always take into account the agency and the voice of the refugee and that integration cannot succeed without the agreement of both sides of the state and the refugees themselves. This is a very important point and this is very relevant for contemporary challenges that our societies and countries are facing. So as we're coming close to the end of our podcast, I would like to ask how the civil society in Greece and Turkey has responded to home across. Uh, is there interest by associations, by research centers? What are you planning, uh, Dr. Anigvalu? Um, as you know, this is a, a very important anniversary on the Greek side, so there is a lot going on. Um, I have to say that in the last decades, there has been a lot of research about the uh, refugee history in all fields, in architecture as well. Many researchers, important historians, have been looking into um, the architecture of the refugee settlement process, and both in the rural and the urban areas. Um, and um, this year is, you know, there is an explosion of events and publications relating to the issue. And we are happy to participate in a, a couple of them. We have been presenting our work, uh, participating in podcasts and uh, uh, publishing in the newspapers. But uh, one of the things that excites us the most is that we will be participating in a major uh, exhibition that will take place at the Benaki Museum uh, in September. It's, it, it's opening in September. But one of the things that uh, excites us the most is that we will be participating, we are participating in a major exhibition that is being organized by the Benaki Museum and uh, the Center of Asia Minor Studies and is due to open in September 2022 under the title Asia Minor, Splendor, Catastrophe, Uprooting and uh, Renaissance or Recreation. Um, and it's uh, coordinated and curated by the art historian Evita Arapoglu. And our team, uh, this exhibition covers a huge range of um, themes relating to Asia Minor and to Greece before and after the displacement. And our team is uh, responsible for the a thematic unit of, of architecture and urban planning. So participating in, in this exhibition is something that is going to be important for us. We will be able to disseminate and to announce some of our the results of our research. That's all for 2022. Hopefully we will keep uh, doing things on the Greek side. Hopefully we will keep doing things in the next couple of years. The project uh, will go on until 2025. So we have uh, sufficient time in front of us to do more things. But also the Izmir, the Izmir side is uh, organizing workshops and events. Um, and perhaps Professor Chil can tell, can tell us more about it. Oh, well, uh, our host institution, ITE, Izmir uh, Institute of Technology, directorship is, has welcomed this research uh, very effectively and very positively. Uh, definitely, um, uh, the Professor Dr. Yusuf Baran is keen on the seeing the outcomes of this research and gives all his support, as does the uh, vice uh, rector, Alper Baba, uh, you know, facilitating uh, anything we need, as well as the uh, dean, uh, Fehmi Doğan. And I should also acknowledge um, the chair of the conservation and uh, preservation of cultural 
Heritage Department Başaki Pekoğlu. So at ITE uh, we have the all, all the support that uh, we have um, and hopefully many more institu- institutions would you know open their uh, gates uh, for uh, the advan- advancement of the research. So far our um, workshops are within uh, the uh, ITE and we have uh, we started the research in Urla where ITE is based uh, and we made a big model uh, of the Uh, town uh, we are going to um, represent the 19th uh, late 19th century early 20th century state of the town everybody is uh, very enthusiastic of the outcomes and there will be uh, workshops related to how to represent how to understand uh, the past through uh, architectural scholarship so th- there's a uh, time ahead of us exhibitions would follow we hope and we got the promise uh, from the uh, chairs of several institutions so this is what i can say about very interesting and exciting information professor grigoriadi perhaps we can we can just mention that uh, the audience can can follow our, our work through our website homacross.eliamet.gr and we also have a twitter and instagram accounts so if people google our a search for the acronym of the program home across Um, they will probably be able to, to find us and uh, follow us. This very important information brings us to the conclusion of our podcast. I would like to thank very, very much Dr. Kalliopi Amigdalu and Professor Ella Chil for taking the time to be with us this morning and share this very important information about a path-breaking common project that aims to shed light on a very sensitive but also very important uh, aspect of Greek-Turkish history. Thank you very much. And please stay Thank tuned. Thank you too, Professor. Uh, my pleasure. Please stay tuned in our podcast series, uh, Issues That Matter. Uh, if you're interested in looking into more uh, uh, projects, more initiatives that aim to foster Greek-Turkish cooperation on issues that don't attract the public attention that they should deserve. Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you too.